the baby girl was born with a swollen head because of a birth defect. At first, everyone thought she was ugly, even so, her folks were very proud of her and did everything they could to make sure she was happy. No one would believe that this cute child was the same baby that people laughed at when they were babies. Like any other young mother, Alice was looking forward to the birth of her daughter and did everything she could to get ready. She had never been so excited before. But then everything changed, and the joy turned into a terrible fear. At 20 weeks, an ultrasound showed a scary chance that could hurt her daughter's health and future. The doctors told Alice to think about other choices, but she wouldn't listen to what they meant. She was set on having her daughter, no matter what, and then she was ready for anything that would happen. Alice was still hopeful, but she was also very upset. Not everything went as planned with the pregnancy, first. There was the scary ultrasound, and then the doctors told her she would need a cesarean section instead of giving birth naturally. She didn't like the idea, but she knew that keeping her daughter safe was more important than how she felt. She was just eager to see her baby now that the C-section was over. She looked into her husband's eyes and hoped that he or the doctor would soon put the baby on her chest. He looked at something, though, that she couldn't see. And it wasn't the happy look of a father meeting his child for the first time. Alice tried to figure out what the brief vision meant. Maybe it was just a side effect of the strong drug that had put her to sleep. Could the medicine be making it harder for her to see or understand what's going on? Where's my baby? Alice spoke softly. Where's my little girl? When she went for the ultrasound, her doctor was worried about what the screen showed, which meant there could be problems during birth. She wasn't expecting anything like this, though, in a moment. The doctors will bring her, her husband said in a strange whisper. It made Alice wonder if they thought she was stupid. She wished someone would tell her something, anything, because her thoughts were getting more and more panicked and her heart was beating faster in her chest. She closed her eyes and thought about the things she was scared of as a child, like the dark, rain, and having to study for a hard test. She remembered closing her eyes and begging in her head, Please God, help me, help me, God, over and over, please God help me. Twenty weeks into her pregnancy, the physicians advised her that her daughter's neurological development may be compromised. Even that terrible news, though, did not equip her for the severity of the problems affecting her child. First time she saw her daughter Eva, she was startled. Eva's most obvious feature was her enormous head, which seemed to be almost double the size of a typical baby's. She first thought of herself as a gray extraterrestrial from a UFO story. She felt great pride as she studied the small body. It's my baby. It doesn't matter what she looks like, she said. The sharp protecting impulse of a mother sprang inside her. I will do all I can to enable her to recover. The worst fears expressed by the doctors after seeing the ultrasound results were realized. Eva had hydrocephalus, a birth defect that resulted in a significant accumulation of fluid in her skull and inhibited normal brain development. Only a tiny portion of brain matter was concealed in a hollow making up more than 90% of the massive head's fluid mass. However, there was more to the story. As time went on and Eva's illness went untreated, more fluid would build up in her brain, causing pressure and discomfort to worsen. This implied that Eva would probably suffer from serious impairments and would not be able to walk or speak. The news was awful. The physicians clarified that they could try to tackle the issue from its origin. Given that Eva's accumulation of fluid was the result of an obstruction, the medical staff needed to devise a plan to remove it. Alice's husband and the neonatal surgeon reviewed the plan, and Alice became extremely anxious about how to make baby Eva as comfortable as possible. Eva was maintained in an incubator that had been carefully designed while her parents considered the ramifications. The surgeon invited Alice to hold her infant and demonstrated to her how to care for Eva tenderly without inflicting more pain or harm before Alice left. Alice took a seat and gently held Eva's little feet in her palms. She felt them curl and thought how Eva must still be aware of her presence and comforted by it, in spite of her severe impairment. Being near her child gave Alice herself comfort. Alice was extremely hurt when she first held Eva because the baby was screaming, and her cries were weak and frail, but Eva grew motionless as Alice held her. After a while, Alice returned the infant to the nurse. She caressed Eva's palm with her index finger as a farewell gesture, and the little fingers attempted to curl around it. Alice found solace in this small act of kindness. And as she attempted to tell herself that a solution would be found, she left the infant in the hands of the medical staff. She was determined to keep her child, but Alice heard something as she was leaving the ward that made her cry, out of sight and perhaps thinking they were having a private conversation. Two women uttered hurtful remarks, 
Gosh, did you see that newborn alien? I was really scared by it, a woman remarked, with a oh my goodness, yes, the other woman answered. Consider having a child like that, what went wrong with the parents, I wonder, perhaps it was some kind of inbred cousin union or something like that, the first woman went on, I don't think anyone normal could have a child like that, Alice could hear their voices becoming closer, and though she was too distraught to face them, she had a strong need to see their faces, without a doubt, Alice did not want either of the ladies to see her face. How would she feel if they could see the hidden humiliation she was carrying? She sneaked inside a white door as she was about to confront them. Strange bins and containers of fluids and mops filled the space she entered. Despite the fact that she had no business being there, Alice remained silent and held her breath as the ladies went by. Alice was about to leave when a nurse glanced back to the room from where she had come, almost colliding with her. Dear. The nurse wanted to know if you were lost. Frightened to speak, Alice froze. A sympathetic expression and a reassuring touch from the nurse indicated that she could feel her concern. I'm sorry, what's wrong? Come on, fill me in on it. Just then, a member of the kitchen staff rolled by with a tea trolley. The nurse reached over and grabbed a hot cup, then delivered it to Alice. Alice was able to utter, thank you, while experiencing a small sense of comfort. Excuse me, are you the mother of Eva? The nurse interjected. How awful for that little girl, and you, I can't even begin to fathom the pain you must be feeling, I can only imagine how anxious you must be, nevertheless, you can take solace in the fact that Dr. Peter is among the nation's foremost pediatric surgeons, she'll be alright, he's dealt with worse cases before, take a seat and enjoy a cup of tea, rather than calling her daughter that alien baby, the nurse used Alice's name, which was much welcomed, Alice saw Eva for what she truly was a human being deserving of kindness and compassion, aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents were all there to welcome the new baby into the world. Fearing their hidden disgust at Eva's look, Alice drew the line at their presence. Their expressions of sympathy were clear even if they said nothing. With every well-intentioned embrace and platitude, Alice recoiled, because her family's opinions mattered to her. She found it harder to avoid hearing them than to reject the words of strangers, Eva who was just a few days old when she was brought into surgery, had a fighting chance for a normal childhood development and maybe survival thanks to a rare medical treatment. By inserting a shunt into her brain, the surgeon could drain the buildup of fluid, giving Eva a chance to recover from this serious condition. The anticipation of having your small child, who was only two days old. Endure surgery brought on a subtle pang of sadness as you waited nervously outside the operating room, with her anxiety growing with every passing second. Alice awaited word, her eyes pleaded with anyone who passed by as she peered down the hospital corridor, is there any news from them, how come it was taking ages, as soon as the doctor walked through the door, Alice felt her breath catch in her throat, she finally had her chance at this moment, Dr. Peter was compassionate and understanding, much like the nurse she'd met before, he gave her the good news that Eva had responded positively to the treatment and that the operation had been successful, that, though, was merely the start, while the fluid drained from Eva's skull cavity provided her brain an opportunity to repair and thrive, much would depend on how well her body adapted. From the very first day, Alice could tell that Eva's skull was different from other newborns. It was smaller and less oval in shape. The operation had been successful, but Eva would still require constant medical monitoring for some time. In the end, Alice gave herself permission to hope that everything would be okay. Physical and occupational therapy were crucial components of Eva's treatment plan to address any developmental delays that may have been exacerbated by her disease. At less than one month of age, Eva was due to meet with the physical therapists for the first time. She accomplished all that was required of her. Despite her youth, common developmental milestones, like sitting up, standing up, and walking, would be difficult for Eva to accomplish without help. The therapists would help her improve her muscle function by guiding her with the use of walkers and braces. Eva spent most of her time in the hospital, but the therapists and nurses made sure she had plenty of chances to spend time with her parents, particularly Alice, who was an active participant in many of the sessions. After starting treatment, Alice had a fresh perspective on her daughter, even though Eva's unique appearance at birth had discouraged her at first, she had come to admire her brave spirit, optimism for Eva's future was sparked by subsequent surgical treatments that reshaped her skull, the smile on Eva's face and the flicker of recognition in her eyes were the most important things Alice saw, it was evident that Eva's brain was healing from her setback.
confirming the conclusions of Dr. Peter and the kind nurse. The mother, who had earlier been afraid, gave herself permission to hope and dream large. Alice was able to find hope for the future by listening to other parents' experiences in a support group for parents of infants with hydranencephaly, which was organized by a social worker. Alice and Andy's family life revolved around the hospital, and they would have been lying if they didn't begin to feel comfortable in those cold, clinical hallways. But one day, they were in for a surprise. Eva was eager to spend the week at home, that is, at a real house, not a makeshift one. The little girl peered out the car window, her eyes full of curiosity at everything that was new and unfamiliar to her. Alice silently feared that, for a young child who had already had so many disappointments, this relatively common yet foreign event may be difficult, but Eva was a soldier and handled it well. Eva wasn't initially drawn to the coat Alice frequently wore to the hospital. Even though it was placed on the sofa along with other of their plush toys, Ghost, the family cat, walked over to meet her with warmth right away. The cat's complete acceptance of Alice's daughter touched Alice. Ghost passed judgment. All he could do was accept the girl as she was. Everything went really well over the weekend, and with Joe's assistance and coordination as their social worker, Alice and Andy started organizing the day when Eva would return home to stay, for these parents. The adage the days are long, the years are short couldn't be more accurate. The days I spent fretting over Eva's growth and well-being seemed to go on forever, but then they flashed by, filled with milestones and toothless smiles. Then, a day Alice had never imagined imaginable arrived five years later. Alice and Andy were getting ready for Eva's kindergarten debut in September, just like thousands of other parents around the UK. Eva had taken considerable care in selecting her attire for this significant occasion, and Alice was almost as enthusiastic. Joe, the social worker who had been assigned to their case five years prior, had just sent Alice a note. It said only that, good luck to the bravest girl in kindergarten. Alice texted Joe a photo of Eva that she had taken on her first day. Caption, isn't she adorable? Eva smiled for the camera. It was difficult to accept that this was the same young youngster who had formerly been described as an alien child by an unknown person. Looking back, Alice couldn't help but notice that Eva's preschooler might now be attended by the mother of that young boy or girl. Some of those old anxieties and doubts surfaced again at the thought. What if Eva's differences were suddenly observed by the other children? What if they brought her misery? Alice looked at Eva and questioned whether she was prepared for this. She had informed the school principal about her daughter's early medical problems, but she also stressed her want for Eva to have a life as normal as possible. Alice noticed the assurance with which her small daughter examined the new surroundings as she walked Eva to the school. Alice stayed for a little, but Eva seemed to settle in fast, a trait her mother had always found remarkable. Eva had early health issues but she was endowed with natural tenacity when it came to confronting novel circumstances. Later Alice was met with the most wonderful sight of all as she waited for her daughter. Eva arrived coming towards her with a confidence devoid of any indication of requiring specific therapy to learn to walk. She was gripping hands with another female. Eva waved vividly and exclaimed, Mom, this is my friend Kelly. She noticed Alice. We will be lifelong best friends always. Alice watched another woman walking toward the two girls. Obviously Kelly's mother, her is quite beautiful. Your daughter Alice answered, Hi Kelly, have you made a friend already? Alice was quite relieved Eva had merged in so naturally. Alice later learned from the teacher that Eva had gone out of her way to play with the quietest student in the class. Eva had not only integrated in with a typical group of five years old but also shown extraordinary social skills and empathy early. She was gorgeous, robust, and, above all, joyful. Alice had only desired for her daughter all that. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. The 2011 birth of Luna in India made headlines throughout the world due to the fact that her head was three times larger than the average baby's, even though she fought valiantly for her family's life. Tragic circumstances befell them five years later. There was a huge medical crisis in 2011 at a little hospital in India's far northeast. The doctors and midwives in the Tripura village of Geraniakala had never encountered a case of hydrocephalus during a delivery. If they were being completely forthright, they would have described little Luna's appearance as alien-like. She seemed unearthly. The physicians were at a loss for words when trying to tell her parents that their daughter had an extremely low probability of survival and an even lower chance of leading a typical life, while the exact nature of her illness remained unknown. 
it was recognized that her abnormally big head, bulging fontanelle, and prominent scalp veins were caused by an excess of fluid surrounding her brain and spinal cord. Seizures, vomiting, and a downward slanting of the eyes were common symptoms, considering that a healthy infant typically has a head circumference of around 34 centimeters. The specialists found that Luna's was 94 centimeters. Luna's father watched as his daughter wailed uncontrollably from the agony of the swelling. The physicians were forthright in their recommendation that the family allow their daughter die quietly, but Luna and Sasha were hellbent on keeping going. They were determined to do whatever it took to save their baby's life, even though she was clearly struggling and having trouble breathing. Due of their financial situation, the Luna family was unable to pay for a second opinion from a doctor. Sasha stayed at home because she had no job prospects. While Luna worked for a pitiful daily income, saving up for pricey medical procedures was an additional obstacle on top of the daily struggle of providing for their family. Thankfully, the world learned about their plight because to social media, which was a potent instrument, about 18 months later, photographers started sharing Luna's images all over the world once they found her. She needed help immediately because her enormous head prevented her from sitting up straight. Resting her head on a pillow, she would spend the remainder of her life confined to a bed. Jonas and Natalie, two students from Norway, decided to help this unhappy child by collecting donations. Funds totaling an astounding $62,000 were collected after the public was moved to action by Luna's plight. Worldwide interest in Luna's rare illness was immediate. New Delhi's Fortis Hospital stepped in and offered to pay for her medical care. Although her 37-inch head circumference was still too big for a baby's head, the surgeons intended to lower it to no more than 23 inches. Doctors removed almost 10 liters of extra fluid from her brain cavity during the first operation. Her parents were quite worried about having another kid because Luna had such a serious medical problem, notwithstanding this. Not long after Luna's initial successful surgeries, the family joyfully welcomed a healthy newborn boy into their lives. The relationship between little Luna was typical of siblings. They played together without animosity. The Luna family became accustomed to the Delhi hospital for the subsequent four years. Luna underwent eight surgeries to decrease the size of her head during her 105 days in the hospital, while Sasha and Luna believed that Luna's growth would be stimulated by these surgeries. The doctor's goal was to alleviate pressure on her brain. They had faith that she would lead a more typical life one day and envision her walking talking, eating, and going to school on her own, even though there was a high mortality rate associated with each operation, the hospital did its best to keep the parents' hopes in check. In spite of everything that had happened, the Luna family did have some good fortune. Following the initial two procedures, Luna exhibited independent laughter, smiling, and head-turning when her name was spoken. She even began to react, for her desperate parents, each of these seemingly insignificant accomplishments served as a ray of hope. The neurosurgeon who performed Luna's procedures was amazed at her will to fight. He didn't think she would get so much better. She could even talk a few words, which was more than he had thought. Luna also started gaining weight, which is positive for upcoming medical operations. One of the most significant days in the family's history was the day she learned to crawl. Her parents were encouraged to let her die by the physicians, who had originally given her only a few days to live. They were amazed by her fortitude. Afterwards, the physicians carefully expressed their belief that she might not live to see her first birthday, but time passed quickly, and Luna accomplished the amazing feat of turning five, despite her slow growth. Her family was ecstatic that she was still alive and was learning new abilities every day. By this time, her second head surgery was already scheduled by the experts at the hospital in Delhi. As with other surgeries, the family planned for the surgery months in advance. They had to sign a release admitting the chance of their daughter's death each time and were warned of the risk, in spite of the risks. The parents prepared for yet another extended hospital stay since they knew that these procedures were essential if their daughter was to have any chance of a decent life. However, Luna started having respiratory issues for no apparent cause. The family was used to seeing their daughter struggle every day of her life. But this time things weren't the same. While Luna was at work, Sasha took care of Luna as usual, not realizing that this difficulty would be different from all the others they had encountered. When Sasha saw that Luna was having trouble breathing, she tried everything to support her. The start of Luna's dyspnea was unexpected and acute because she had eaten earlier in the day and felt well. Sasha knew Luna had to get to the hospital as soon as possible. So she called her husband and asked him to head home. 
Luna hurried to his daughter's side as soon as he got home. Luna lay there perfectly still, even though he tried to shake and touch her to obtain a reaction. She was dead, and it was too late for him. Luna lost her valiant fight against an uncommon ailment on Sunday, June 18, 2017, only a few weeks before another planned surgery. Several community members expressed the opinion that, since she had never had a particularly fulfilling life, her passing was a godsend. Her family was distraught, though, her little brother was devastated to learn that his beloved sister will never play with him again and had to face death far early than any youngster should. Without her kid, Sasha, who had always yearned to be a mother and caretaker, felt directionless and lost. She determined to preserve Luna's memory and persisted in fighting for her family despite how tough it was to move forward. Luna's legacy will live on thanks to the upcoming release of a documentary about her life. Luna may be no longer with us but her tale will live on forever. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.